We're going to talk about um, depth, scale, and volume today. And I, and I have to um, just remind you guys, even though we don't read these pages in class, this is the material that you're going to be responsible for when it comes to the quizzes. So make sure that you're reading it, OK? Because it gives you examples in here, and it uh, gives you far more than I'm yapping about, OK? Uh, there's, there's a lot more to this than, than I talk about in class. What I usually talk about in class is I give you a kind of an overview and then set you on the project, right, so you can practice. Uh, but there's a lot of information in these pieces that will be on the quizzes. So make sure you're doing the reading, OK? Just a reminder. All right, so let's see here. If I open up Illustrator. I'm going to just give some examples. We need some filler music right here. Jeopardy theme, perhaps. <laughs> I'm telling you, in education school, they told us, when you ask a question, wait 20 seconds for an answer. <laughs> and that's normal, right? Just sit there and look around like nobody's saying. Nobody's saying anything. Right. That 20 seconds of uncomfortable silence is like an eternity. All right. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to draw two images here on my page. All right. Now, <coughs> obviously, the, the, the circle is the front object, right? No? How, how, yeah, how would you know that that's the front object? <laughs> you drew it last, right? That, it would be the front object because I drew it last. That's, that's exactly right, because that's how illustrator works but pretend pretend you were seeing this in the modern museum of art and i am the curator and i'm talking about it and i say obviously our our object here the the ellipse is in front and you would be saying what what how would you even know that right because i haven't given you any context that tells you that that object is in front all right, I have given you no context at all about that three-dimensional space, except maybe, 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 those two objects are side by side because they're the same size. Maybe, right? But I've given you no other information here. There's no shadows, there's no highlights, there's no overlapping, okay? So if I do that now, let's give myself a little bit more definition. Now which one is in front? Obviously, right? Because of overlapping. Overlapping is one of the visual cues that you can give the, uh, the viewer to know that that thing is in front. Pretty simple, pretty basic, but that's what we're doing in this class is simple and basic, right? Practicing that. Okay, so if I take this do that to it, we know that that object is in front, OK? And we can also know something is in front by giving it a little bit of size context. What happens if I do that sort of thing? We think, I'm going to take the stroke down, because that actually will help. Okay, so then, then there's a possibility, without any other context, that that, that ellipse is further away because it's, things get smaller as they get further away, right? So even if you've got Goliath you know, at uh, 200 yards away, he's going to look smaller than a person standing 10 feet away, obviously. All right, so that's 
what we call that is depth. All right, so we had we had overlapping. We had we have scale because this object is larger than this object, and as things get further and further back into space, then we have what's called depth. All right, so how would I know that this object really uh, isn't in front? If I did that, even though it's smaller, it means it's in front, right? Just because we've got overlapping here. But if I took this away, how else could we know that that object is um, in front or behind? Any ideas? Emilia, say, say, say it again louder. It's bigger, right? So you've got scale. We get scale. Yeah, what sort of other visual cues might I use to make the, the depth obvious? Shadow, a shadow would work, definitely. All right, so let's say I did something like, oh, I gotta turn off my smart guides because they make me crazy. All right, so let's do, let's do a stroke of none. I'm going to create a gradient, radial, Say it again. <laughs> Oops. Now I gotta do it this way. What do you think of that? Does that sort of indicate? What we've done is we've created a plane now because that, that shadow is resting on a plane. And uh, with, that, with that shadow on that plane, now we can see. That's the visual cue we need to be able uh, to see that that object is further back in space and the square is further forward in space. All right. so. What we're dealing with now is we are dealing with volume, okay? Volume with highlights and shadows. What you're saying to the eye is this thing takes up three dimensions of space, all right? So if I add a highlight, let's see, I had a highlight here. Move that back. Oops, that needs to go further back. And let's say I take a little bit of license here to create kind of a highlight. Whoop. There we go. Highlight there as though that were a three dimensional shape. It's got a little bit of a a little bit of a curve there on the front. That's kind of how that highlight would manifest itself. Um, what we've just done is we've just created volume. All right now it's taking up three-dimensional space. There's light and shadows. All right, and that's those are the those are the cues that we're looking for to tell us that they actually take up space in three dimensions. All right, so. I put it all together, send that to back. All right, I've got, I've got overlapping, right? That's one visual cue. I have got depth, eeks. all right, showing that I've got um, uh, one thing in front of the, well, it's overlapping, is showing depth right here. I've got scale in that one object is significantly larger than another. 
and I've got volume showing that these things are taking up three uh, dimensional space. And these are all visual cues. These are what tell the, the viewer how that space works. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so we've broken it down into <laughs> really, really simple components, but how you, how you do this can be very complex. This is, this is a very simple example of how you might do this, but it can be done very complex. All right, so I'm going to just talk a little bit right now about some quick and easy tools and a little bit more complex tool. Okay. So it's real common for people to want to take shortcuts. And Illustrator has given us some very, very cool, easy shortcuts. Photoshop 2. Okay. This guy's wildly out of proportion, but I'm doing it quick. Give me a break. All right, so here we go. Here's my, here's my guy. All right, how can we give him a little bit of dimension? We say, well, let's give him a shadow. And we go, wait, Illustrator gives me a tool to do shadows. It does, isn't it so cool? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and take my guy here. And this is in the effect panel, okay? You, you are gonna wanna pay attention to this because I think this is on your assignment, all right? What we're gonna do is create what's called a drop shadow. So if you go to effect, now this doesn't make any sense, so you're gonna have to memorize it, stylize. You're looking for the stylize item, and you're looking for drop shadow. And drop shadow there, okay? If I want to preview it, I can see here at this cool shadow. I say, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it there. Can you see that up there on the board? Okay. So there's the shadow. What does that shadow look like? What does it make, what, what effect does that give you regarding um, his interaction with three-dimensional space? He's, he's not three-dimensional. What happens is he looks like a, a cardboard cutout that's sitting a couple inches off of a very flat surface. So while uh, Illustrator gave us this really cool shadow tool. It doesn't make it look any more realistic if it were a real, honest-to-goodness person, right? Because shadows don't look like that. You know, if I'm walking along here, you don't see my shadow cast perfectly on this wall in my shape, right? That doesn't happen. Uh, light interacts in th three dimensions rather than two dimensions. So this is what they call a drop shadow. I'm going to show you a different kind. All right, I'm going to go ahead and remove. If you want to remove an effect, uh, if you go to Window, uh, Appearance, right, there's a bunch of things that are applied here. You can see Stroke, Fill, Drop Shadow. All I have to do to remove uh, an item from that is grab that and drag it into the trash of the Appearance panel. Okay, so that's something you probably want to know eventually. Okay, so if I want to do a, a more realistic shadow, I create what's called a cast shadow, okay? And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to take, take you through it step by step. I'm going to copy this guy, so that's control C, and I'm going to paste right behind him. That's control B for behind, pastes behind. And so if I change his color to, let's say, black, you can't see it because it's behind. But you'll see it in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and grab this very top um, handle on the shape. And you can see it already begins to look a little bit more realistic because it's anchored to his feet, more or less. All right, that makes sense, right? Kind of, sort of. Okay, I lose anybody so far? Cast shadow? Yeah. And I made that up, but it seems right to me, right? Because it's being cast off of the object. If you run across, you know, some highfalutin 2D design 
instruction manual that gives me a better word for it, let me know. <laughs> okay, so here we go. That makes a lot of sense, right? But I want to increase the realism just a little bit. If I wanted to show that the light was coming from this side, where's the shadow going to go? We go to the opposite side, right? So the, the shadow will go this way. If the light is coming from this direction, the shadow is going to go that way. Okay. So in Illustrator, what I'm looking for is a thing. Um, oh, I'm forgetting the name of it now. Um, it's called shear. Okay. It's found uh, about halfway down, and up. It's, it's normally on the scale tool. But if I click and hold, I can get the shear tool. All right, shear tool will allow me to adjust this um, along an axis. Okay, so I'm going to click and drag this top. Now I'm going to hold down shift while I do it so that it, it remains on the zero, um, uh, what do you call it? the zero axis, right? The, the x-axis. All right. So here we go. I've got my shear. If I'm smarter, what I do is I grab this, um, this orientation point here, the point of origin. I'm going to bring it down here to this corner. And now when I grab that shear, it's nicer. It stays anchored to the points. All right. Another effect of shadows. They get darker as, um, as the object ap approaches the ground. Okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a, um, a gradient here. I'm going to change this fill to a gradient by clicking. I'm going to double click on the gradient tool. And the type of gradient that I'm looking for is called a linear gradient. Okay? It goes in a line. Now, this. This gradient that it automatically comes up with goes from left to right, but what I want is for it to go from the bottom to top. All right, so I click and drag straight up. That gives me my gradient there. And um, it usually defaults to black and white, and in this case, that's exactly what I want. All right, and I can use these sliders here to uh, indicate where the black level will, um, will begin or where the white level will begin. OK, so that gives me um, a, general, a generally pretty good shadow. So if you look at him there, that's, that's a far more realistic type of shadow to work with in, uh, in vector art. All right, so do you need to see that again? or? Got it more or less. You can watch the video again if you want to see it done. Yeah. Okay. I, I'll just go through that one more time so we can see it again. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this object. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste behind, which is Control B, as in burro. OK, I'm going to go ahead and set that to black just so that I can differentiate it. And then I can, uh, I can transform it by grabbing that handle. All right, so there we go. And I'll go ahead. And now I'm looking for the shear tool, shear tool right here. Now you'll see that there's a point of origin right here. And I can move that point of origin where I want it. I want to anchor that to one of the feet here. OK, so I'm going to just go ahead and put it right there on that point. So it, now it's anchored along the bottom. And now I can squash and stretch to my heart's content, but it is anchored on that spot. If I hold Shift, it's, gonna, it's going to maintain the, uh, the sort of uh, axis that I'm looking for, which is 0, zero on the x, x axis, right? Is that right? Is it 0 on the y? I forget. That's why I got into design. I don't have to do math. <laughs> OK. So there we go. So there's, there's my cast shadow there. And then in my gradients, I've, if I double click it, I get my gradient panel. Typically, when you set uh, um, it, the type of gradient here, I'm going to go ahead and put that on linear. Typically, it'll 
default to black and white. Okay. And now I can, because, because I'm on the gradient tool, I can set that however I want to. Okay. In this case, I want to go from, from bottom to top. Uh huh. Uh yes. Okay. Well, put put it on there then. Put just just click on it right there. Okay. And okay. So let's see. Right. The actual gradient tool. Up there. There we go. Yep. You got it. <laughs> yeah, you've got to be on the gradient tool in the toolbar for this to actually work. Oh, gotcha. Now I understand. Okay. So I'm not showing you the, the, the full meal deal here. Okay. So let's see if I can bring this in. All right. So great. Can you see it now? Okay. Gradient, gradient tool right here. Sorry, guys. I didn't realize you couldn't see it. That's the, that's the tool that's got to be on right there in order for you to use that... Um, I'm not sure what you call this. It is the gradient tool. All right. And then you can use the sliders to adjust. And you could throw other values in here if you wanted to. This is value added. You don't have to do this. If I wanted to um, you know, change some aspect of my, um, of my gradient, I could, I could just click. I could just click beneath this. And I could double click it to change the actual uh, value of that. All right. So there we go. There's my there's my cast shadow. This one is the drop shadow. This one is the cast shadow. Now, if we could add just a little bit more realism, we would um, we would make this the edges get fuzzier as they go out out into the distance, but we don't have to worry about that if you don't want to. Might be enough <laughs> just to do what we've done. All right. OK. So let's look real quick at our assignment. Having read all of this stuff in here, Um, okay, yes. All right, so uh, in this case, this is a really free exercise. You get to create depth using overlapping. Whatever it is you want to do to, to create that sense of overlapping, right, so that one thing is in front of another object, okay? This is almost like falling off of a truck. It's so easy, okay? Create a sense of depth uh, uh, with scale, okay? Again, it's up to you how you want to do it. And then create a sense of volume by using a drop shadow or a cast shadow, whichever you'd like to do. Okay. If you're quick about it, probably take you 10, 15 minutes. Probably could finish this before you leave today if you're comfortable with the tools, that is. So if, for example, we wanted to use our planar drawing, mm -hmm. wouldn't a drop shadow look really weird? It might. Drop shadow would would make it feel like a cardboard cutout sitting up off of a surface. Uh, a cast shadow would look very strange because then then it gives it kind of this um, globular appearance of like a head sitting in space. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you could. I mean, you could do anything that you wanted to in this case, and and so long as you've, you know, accomplished these three things, I'm not going to ding you for points on that. That's um, that's really what I'm looking for is that those items get done. All right. So, are there any questions? Ready, set, go.